Hello folks, welcome back. Here are some examples of physical contaminants. Glass, possibly from windows or lights, nuts and bolts from machinery, packaging materials, bones and shells, jewellery, cigarette ends and plasters. Here's an example of a physical contaminant. A mouse, cooked and sliced in a loaf of bread. But the mouse was cooked to 75 degrees C, so was safe to eat. Cross-contamination is the transfer of food poisoning bacteria from a source to a high-risk food. Here we have an example of direct and indirect cross-contamination. Raw poultry coming into contact with ready-cooked or high-risk food. Indirect, where raw food has been prepared on a board, the board has not been cleaned or disinfected. Cooked, ready-to-eat food, has been prepared on the same board. Sources of pathogens can include people, pets, birds, rodents, flies, raw food, bins, raw, unwashed vegetables. Vehicles of contamination can include hands, cloths, raw food, knives, preparation boards, food containers, work surfaces and clothing. And the final destination for the pathogens. High-risk foods, where they can grow and cause food poisoning. Here's another example of cross-contamination, drip. This is why raw foods must always be kept below high-risk foods in a fridge. If we want to make food last longer, we can preserve it. Preservation methods removes one or more requirements for bacterial growth. With high temperature food preservation, we have pasteurization, ultra heat treatment and sterilization. Low temperature preservation include a freezer at minus 18 degrees C and a fridge at 1 to 4 degrees C. We can preserve food by pickling, using an acid, such as vinegar, which has a low pH. Pathogens prefer a pH value of around 7, or neutral, in order to grow. We can preserve food by dehydration, for example, drying, adding sugar or salt to food to draw out the moisture. Other methods of food preservation include vacuum packing, controlled atmospheres, smoking and using chemical preservatives. In Lecture 3 we looked at the main sources of bacterial contamination, examples of action which should be taken to prevent the contamination of food and the reasons why we need high standards of personal hygiene. Thanks for watching. In the next video I will start to go through design and construction of food premises and food pests and control.